Today, I'm going to give a brief overview of Express LRS. The idea of this video is for people who have no idea of what this is or have heard of it, but don't really understand what it's all about. What I'm going to do today is explain a brief overview of what the system is, what it does, and why you might want to consider this compared to other wireless control links on the market. So to explain what is Express LRS, first of all, it is a long range, low latency, open source wireless communication protocol. It's designed to be used on both custom and existing hardware and works on both the 2.4 gigs and 8 to 900 megahertz bands. It can offer range in excess of 40 kilometers, but not only is it long range, it also offers ultra low latency of up to 500 hertz control links on standard hardware or even 1000 hertz on custom radios. The interesting thing about Express LRS is that it works on existing radio hardware such as the FR Sky R9M, the Jumper R900 as well as Ghost, but you can also get custom hardware from the likes of Happy Model, Flywoo and others that allow you to choose the system that best suits your needs. From a radio point of view, it is compatible with pretty much most of the standard ones on the market, including anything that is running OpenTX, EdgeTX, or even FreedomTX, as long as it's running the latest builds, and it uses the Crossfire protocol for communication. As I've already mentioned, Express LRS is designed to give you ultra long range and low latency control link, but there are some differences between the 8 and 900 meg system and the 2.4 gig one. For instance, the 8 and 900 megs can be used in excess of 40 kilometers, but that is limited up to 200 hertz control link, whereas the 2.4 gig system will offer up to 35 kilometers range or more and that 500 hertz control link or more, depending on what radio system. Now, the way Express LRS is able to achieve this is through a very clever LoRa radio based protocol that prioritizes the RC sticks over other parts of the system and sort of changes what data is sent for the AUX switches depending on what mode they're in. So, for instance, you've got a standard switch mode and a hybrid switch mode, and rather than send the full PWM data for the AUX channels, there's some reduced data that is sent and that is how it's able to actually reduce that overall packet size and then get that ultra long range and ultra low latency. As a result of this, you do need to make sure that you are setting your arming switch on AUX1 because the AUX1 channel does also behave differently to the other AUX channels and has been prioritized to ensure that the system behaves correctly. Telemetry-wise, Express LRS supports a limited telemetry as standard. However, you can enable full telemetry support via the Express LRS configurator, just like you find on other radio systems. Doing this will have no impact on the overall range or the low latency performance of the radio link, but it is worth taking into account that the telemetry data is sent at a reduced rate compared to the stick data, and there are settings for this in the Express LRS Lua script for your radio. Now, all of this range and performance that I've discussed is dependent on the power output of both your transmitter and the receiver. Because this is a two-way system, not only is the power output of your transmitter important, but your receiver needs to be able to transmit that telemetry data back. And that's why there is that limited telemetry option to allow it to have the best possible performance. Transmitters are available in 250 milliwatts all the way up to one watt, depending on what model you choose. And receivers do tend to have about a 17 milliwatt output as standard. However, you can get versions with a built-in power amplifier that offer lots more performance too. As I've already mentioned, Express LRS is open source and that means it is community driven. As a result of this, we are seeing rapid development of the system. We're seeing more and more hardware appear all of the time and it allows people to not only get involved in using it, but get involved in designing their own hardware as well, based around off the shelf silicon. This can include the Semtech SX1280RF transceiver, as well as the ESP32 or the STM32 SOCs. Most of the hardware is based around the ESP32, and this allows for some interesting functionality, including the ability to upgrade the firmware via Wi-Fi. 
There is also a project that's going on called Backpack that will allow you to communicate between different parts of the system via the ESP Now protocol. This, for instance, will give you features such as the ability to automatically upgrade the goggles channel when you change it on your VTX. You can actually use a receiver programmed with special firmware to communicate with your goggles module. And when you change the channel on your VTX, your receiver will automatically change for you too. As a result of this, we have seen more and more companies get involved and there are also schematics that you can download online yourself to make your own transmitter or receiver if you did want to get involved in the project. So you might be asking yourself, why should I choose Express LRS over the likes of Crossfire, R9M, Tracer or Ghost? Well, Express LRS's biggest benefit is the fact that it is open source. It is a community-driven project that allows you to directly feed back and get the features you want. Because it's open source and community driven, it has a very fast development rate and that allows us to do things that we've not seen before. For instance, Express LRS has Wi-Fi firmware updating and there's lots more development coming with this system around the corner as well. Furthermore, there is off the shelf hardware as well as custom hardware available. But if that doesn't suit your needs, you can even design your own radio system should you want to. If none of them suit you, there are also flight controllers coming with Express LRS built in. And we're seeing some really interesting and new developments around this system that we've not seen before. There is a lot to like with Express LRS because it offers pretty much everything you need from a long range, low latency control link. As I've said, it can work over 40 kilometers. It works on both 2.4 and 8 to 900 megahertz. It works on existing hardware and it has that ultra low latency of up to 500 hertz on standard radios or more if you want to go down the custom route. Whilst there is a lot of benefits to this system, there is the odd downside as well. Today, things are still very much in development. And whilst the software has jumped on leaps and bounds, it isn't quite bind and fly. There is a little bit of setup involved and there are many different hardware manufacturers. So that means you're not dealing with one company. From a software point of view, you're dealing with the Express LRS community. And from the hardware point of view, you might be dealing with your hardware vendor. However, whilst there are one or two downsides, the benefits of this system vastly outweigh them. And there is a massive community building around this that offers a huge amount of help and support should you need it. Here and now, for me, Express LRS is one of the most interesting things that I've seen come to FPV and drones over the last couple of years. We are seeing massive rapid development, new features and capabilities, and it's going to be really interesting to see where this system goes over the next couple of months and years. If you're interested in finding out more, I will put a link to the Express LRS website as well as the wiki in the description. And I will also put a link to their Discord server as well, where there is a massive community of fantastic users waiting to help you get involved. Now, if you found this video interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. Over the next couple of months, I'm going to be making more and more content on Express LRS. This was simply a high level overview just to give you an introduction to what the system is. I'm going to be doing reviews on the hardware. We're going to be doing tutorials and walkthroughs. So if you're interested in seeing that, don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. Furthermore, if you'd like to support the links, there are links to Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. And I also have my own Discord server as well. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll put a link to that down there too.